thank you so much for, for taking time out to, to talk all things uh, Summit Fever. This, this isn't the first um, film of yours to, to feature climbing in uh, uh, Lonely Place to Die. You know, the, the, the main characters were all, all mountain climbers, but that was more in the background. What was it uh, about this story that made you decide to shift the focus? Um, that's, uh, that's, uh, you know, I was really umming and ahhing about trying to find, <coughs> beg your pardon, uh, trying to get inspired to do a movie because, um, you know, I was very pleased with A Lonely Place to Die and, um, you know, I'd become, you know, I, uh, you know, I was a, sort of a, an accomplished climber and I'd been out in the Alps and I was always thinking, you know, how can I try and utilise this incredible backdrop and then I did a film which we shot out in Miami and sort of London and everywhere uh, called Plastic and you know it was quite a fun experience but I think that I just got a little bit ahead of myself after A Lonely Place to Die which is a very well-reviewed film and, and with Plastic I thought well the script's okay and we can sex it up a bit and, and you know it's not my story as such and what really happened was that the film got very very ho-hum reviews really sort of lots and lots of two-star reviews and people were like oh, it's you know the really nice reviews were it's all right you know yeah. which is never nice to hear but the thing was I remember that as it was going on I had a meeting to go and see these people about a movie which I didn't particularly want to do and literally on my way to this meeting uh, this this movie hit me. I knew I wanted to do a mountaineering film, but, you know, I thought, you know, was I going to do a film about the 1865 first ascent to the Matterhorn? No, that's boring and too competitive. And then suddenly just hit me. It's just like a youth culture film, like literally like a just almost a sort of a coming of age, baptism of fire, epic mountaineering movie. And, you know, I thought about the other day, sorry if I'm whittling on, but I've had, I've just had two cups of coffee to wake me up. Um, uh, I, I do actually see this as my um, unofficial sequel to A Lonely Place to Die and part two of my mountaineering trilogy or mountain trilogy, as I have to say, because it's not all just that. But that's that's kind of my, my unofficial sort of way of doing it. But no, I'm it's a real you know, it's, it's about making a film and having passion for it, because having you know made a film that was not very successful critically, um, you know, then went on and did some TV work and did a section of the ABCs of Death 2, which was great fun. And really found, you know, you realise that it's just too much, too much hard work, Kat. Too much goddamn yeah. hard work. You may as well do something that you absolutely love. And then I tried to tout the script around initially to different places. And we had people going, well, is there any way we've got a story about some cocaine that needs to be shifted from Bristol to, to Bradford? And then there's a gangster and Mr. Biggs. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, well, well, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I can't tell you how many the boys owe Mr. Big 15 grand by the weekends. And if they don't pay him back, they're, they're brown bread. And, you know, it just, as one doesn't get any younger cat, you just put your head in your hands and you go, please, no, please. If I get bad reviews this time round, then then I can't you know then <laughs> then at least I tried at least I just gave it everything and put all my passion and soul into this film you know that's your long answer and I do apologize for it being so long I mean the film opens with you know the the words that describe you know summit fever you know being this this thing that drives people when they're halfway up the mountain to continue to the top no matter the the uh, adversity would you say that there's a similar a similar process to uh, filmmaking this film was the toughest film I've ever had to make. You know, we had money fall through, we had actors fall through, we had a COVID-19 pandemic. I, you know, there were a lot of times when my wife, my parents, my friends just said, maybe you should walk away from this one, Julian. It's just not going your way. And I don't know, I, I was like, guys, I think I'm all in. You know, I was working with the producer, Tin and Hamby, and apart from that, you know, we, we weren't getting very much support from anybody else who was sort of, you know, who, who slapped their names all over the movie. And, um, and so, yeah, it was, yeah, you know, you, you just can't take your eye off, 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 off the finished goal. I think if you really care about something, you know, you, you, you really have to push it. And I think, you know, sometimes people will just believe that sort of determination and just, yeah, let's jump on it and sort of be inspired and, 
hopefully continue the journey with you. I mean, I still can't believe it's in the can. I can't believe it's finished. You know, I, I, to say it's the toughest film ever, ever, ever made is still an understatement, Cat. It was so hard and not all the mountaineering, all the, you know, the suits, the lack of money, the, the, the sort of just, yeah, anyway. Well, I think it's, you know, unless you're, you know, unless you've got like Disney or somebody behind you, it is hard these days to get a film, you know, financing and stuff, especially, you know, as, as everyone's, you know, purses tighten. So, you know, it's commendable that you did sort of persevere and, and get this through to completion. Yeah, I was, well, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm super, super happy now, actually. I thought, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with it. It's, it, it's a realistic, it's emotional, it's, you know, I've seen people's reactions to it. it. Seems to be, you know, seems to be working. You know, I'm very much a feet on the ground sort of person. So these films, they always fascinate me. That one, people would want to risk their life to climb these things, and you know, not only in this case have you got people climbing the mountain, but you're filming up there as well. I mean, what challenges did that present? Because you know, this is hard enough for people, you know, just to, to get up full stop. A lot, a lot. I mean, I remember because I had to prove to one of the production companies that this could even be done because, you know, when I said, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to go and shoot on the Dent de Géant, and they're like, well, so the Dent de Géant translates as the giant's tooth, and it's just this jagged sort of spike of dog tooth rock that goes up to above 13,000 feet and very, very exposed. And I, I remember, like, you know, that my first sort of, in sort of, June 2017 we went up to recce it and you know on the way back down somebody knocked a rock the size of a bloody suitcase this is similar to a scene in the film actually but somebody knocked this massive rock and me and John McCune had to just run out of the way must have missed us by a few meters but th that's not a lot you know because this thing would have absolutely killed us and I remember that evening I just sat in this room over a bottle of wine with tin and my legend of a producer and I just broke down in tears and said how the hell am I going to do this you know I, I could have got killed on day minus one it wasn't even a shooting day and and he said well tomorrow might be better <laughs> and I guess you know you just you just keep knocking it off I mean well also on a serious note you have to climb with the best people you have to hire the best people you know if it's you know we had an amazing stunt team on a lonely place to die we had an amazing climbing team the absolute very very best that there is uh, on this film and you know because you know you might be able to economize on you know filming in some ways you, you can't economize on safety period you know so mm -hmm. uh you know yeah but it was it was so I think I, I think you know in short cat it was so huge I mean the storyboards you know I mean pages and pages and walls and walls of storyboards and everything and I knew that I had to shoot it over several different seasons to get to yeah. film safely on certain mountains and certain faces and certain what have you and you just started to see it like a giant jigsaw puzzle like a 10,000 foot puzzle and you keep ticking off those shots and then you know I needed one actor way ahead of time which was Freddie Thorpe you know as long as I because I could always double his climbing partner you know with you know with the head behind he could be attached to a professional dress like Jean-Pierre but I mean he he really really got it he trained he you know Freddie Freddie and myself climbed the Matterhorn uh, you know, that we actually have Freddie as an actor, you know, that, you know, when people say, what's the, what's the most interesting place to film or the most interesting film set you've had? And the summit of the Matterhorn is 14,692 feet above sea level. It's one foot wide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to my right, because I'm, I'm on the camera, to my right is a 3,500 foot drop on down the north face and a 4,000 foot drop to my left down the south face. And, I've, you know, I've got John McCune holding me on a rope. And I've got Freddie, you know, there and I'm filming him, uh, you know, and, uh, and it, you know, you had to pinch yourself. There was just a sea of cloud below. And I thought, well, you know what, you can't, you can't fake this, you know, you know, it's, it's, you know, and I just thought if we just keep our sort of, you know, our, you know, if we just keep that kind of attitude to try and recreate this quality throughout the film, you know, the same with casting the best people, you know, you know, really, really, you know, whittling and getting the script because I had a lot of time to sort of hone the script over the course of this thing as it sort of asked me lots of questions of myself and, and all sorts. But I think, yeah, I think we just had the attitude, you know, if we're going to go and climb the mountain, you know, if we're going to go and climb the Matterhorn to get half a dozen close-ups, 
uh, let, then, then that's that's the attitude I wanted to take for the whole film, you know? Yeah, and I mean, really fortunate then that you found a, a lead actor that was so committed because, you know, like you say, you had to do it over <coughs> seasons and that's a, it's a long time for... For somebody to to commit to yeah he was a real cool dude actually because he had a he had a you know he just had a really good attitude you know in fact he, he thought it was really exciting you know he was like you know can i do this and stuff i'm like well look if you train up in snowdonia ahead of time and you know you come with the right people yeah sure you know he also climbed on the don de Jean, which if anything is steeper and tougher and and, and you know even more exposed than <clears throat> the matterhorn and we put him on the north face of the Eiger as well. Um, it's mad. I think about it just talking to you now. This is just, just like, you know, this is one of my first sort of interviews, I suppose, since the film's done. And it, it, it's, it's only really crazy when I actually sort of sit and regale it, I guess, you know? <laughs> But I mean, you can't you can't be the authenticity, can you? You know, as much as you know, the movie industry is moving towards green screen and stuff. You can't you can't fake you can't fake that actual peril that you know was no, there I mean, when you were shooting. Funny. Yeah, it's, I agree with you. I mean, it's, it's funny. You know, I saw a, a very big budget film the other day, and it was a very good film. And I'm not going to name the film, but there were two very big movie stars, and they were on this cliff, and the cliff was only I don't know the height of. I don't know, maybe it was 30 feet high and they were just sort of having, you know, they were sort of on this ledge chatting away. And I can see that the cliff's been made and you can see that, you know, it's been made of plaster cast and something and they've put in the sort of plants and the pit. And I thought, why can't you just go and film it in a quarry? Why can't you just go and film it, you know, just go and film it on some low, you know, nursery slope stuff that you could take, you know, I mean, there's just nothing's going to beat real rock, you know. I mean, I mean, that was the other thing, the sort of the finale of this film. We had a lot of night shoots uh, and we, we, we decided to just go up to 2,000 metres, 7,000 feet. And this was in May and there was so much snow that we were wading through up to our sort of chest. And it was like, it's, nothing's going to look better than this. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, the, it just all looked so real. And, and it was just, we just, as I said, we just continued to sort of take the attitude. I guess what it is, is that, you know, without sounding too corny, and I said it with a lonely place to die, I said, well... You know, our, our sets with the Lonely Post to Die had been built by the last Ice Age. And, you know, with, with um, you know, our, our, most of our film sets for this was when Italy crashed into Europe and formed the Alps, you know. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and I mean, you, you know, it's nothing going to really look better than that, you know. Definitely. And you mentioned earlier that this is the second in your trilogy. So does that mean that you, uh, you're working on the next one? Yes, I have a number of projects, but I am working on a yeah an, a, an epic but it's it's a different genre you know and that's all i'm going to say so far it's not you know in the same way a lonely place to die is not the same genre as as, as summit fever summit fever they're very much you know against the elements they're not against some horrible nasty kidnappers or trying to save a you know but and, and it'll, and it'll be another genre again for the third part definitely can yeah Cool. I look forward to seeing that. And yes, finally, why should people take the uh, the time out to to watch Summit Fever? I mean, for me, as a not very active person, it's you know, it's nice, quite nice to see somebody do something that I myself would never see. But why should people seek it out? Oh, let let just allow yourself to be taken on an adventure. Do you know what I mean? Because, and I tell you something else about this is that the cast are quite young, and this this film is not for the young per se this is a film for anyone who has ever been young so i'm hoping to say it's a timeless adventure because i mean <clears throat> you know i'm hoping there's an 80 year old couple cozing up with a cup of hot chocolate or even better a gin and tonic to watch this film and they go you know that was that was us in the 1960s or that was us in the 1970s it's pretty damn timeless you know i mean my wife read an early draft of the script and she said Jules this is amazing I love it but how are you going to do all the 90s details on the on the ski slopes you're going to have to check I said it's not set in the 90s she said oh I read it as that I said well yeah you were a ski instructor in the 90s it's not set in the 90s so she just it, it must have felt pretty timeless in that respect you know so yeah um be taken on an adventure be taken to the highest peaks and some of the most dangerous peaks in the world remember what it was like to be young foolish, excited, not cynical. Uh, remember all of these things, uh, you know, remind yourself, you know, what, what, what you can achieve when you're not bogged down by the bullshit of modern life and everything else, you know? That I guess is what I could really say, um, Kat. <laughs> 
and you hope that maybe it might inspire a few people to maybe take up the sport not necessarily going to climb the Matterhorn but you know um, you know the thing is climbing in itself not so much mountaineering because there's more objective dangers like rock fall and yeah. uh, but, but climbing itself is a low insurance sport you know I mean it's, it's like anything there's there's the, there's easy intermediate and very difficult yes it's a very you know going climbing anywhere in the world especially in, you know, in the British Isles you don't even need to go to Europe uh, there's so many adventures to be had so many you know so yeah um, <clears throat> if it inspires anybody to um, get outdoors and have an adventure then great you know but I hope people you know get caught up in the story get caught up with the characters and, and, and hopefully get get dragged along for the ride you know well, I wish you best of luck with the release.